the Detroit Lions, in my opinion, got ripped off a little bit because Dan Campbell, Ben Johnson, and Taylor Decker, they understand the rules of the NFL. They understand them. They know if Taylor Decker is going to line up as an eligible receiver, he's going to have to report. You can see that he reported. Decker was eligible because the two receivers were off the ball. The other side was ineligible because the receiver was on the ball and the other tight end was covered up. So it's clear that Detroit Lions had this play drawn up for this situation. They called it, ran it to perfection, and unfortunately, the referees botched it. And this is the tough part about the National Football League. Sometimes you can play a great game in a hostile environment, and it comes down to one play. And that one play sometimes, unfortunately, can get botched by the officials. And that's just the way the NFL has been and will always be. Dan Campbell is a different guy. I'll tell you what, you have to respect his guts uh, for the decisions that he makes. He fakes a field goal, they or a f- fakes a punt, they get it. Uh, he goes down, they have fourth and five at the five. They don't kick the field goal, they get shut out. They come back in the game and uh, make it a great game and they have a chance to tie the game going to overtime. He chooses to go for two. They do a tackle eligible play. They get it. However, there's a penalty. After the penalty, instead of kicking the extra point, he says, heck with it. I'm going to go for two again. Dallas jumps off sides. They go for two again. That is a heck of a lot of pressure to put on your offensive coordinator because as a play caller myself, I don't have that many plays inside the five-yard line, man. It's hard. I mean, it's hard. You got pick plays. You got... Uh, cross plays if they play zone you're not sure you got inside zone plays you can run it's a very difficult situation to be in when you can just take a deep breath kick the field goal kick the extra point go into overtime and let your players regroup and win the game because you had a lot of momentum at that time now the tackle eligible play i got a lot of questions on that one because i think decker was eligible a lot of ebbs and flows in this game which you would expect with two heavyweight boxers you know you, you watch a heavyweight boxing match and one guy's going to win one round, the next guy's going to win the next round, and then after 12 rounds, there's going to be a decision made, and today the decision went to the Cowboys. But I like Detroit's football team. I like their offensive line. I like their backs. I like Jared Goff, even though he threw a couple picks. I like Amonra St. Brown. I like their defense. I think they're doing a great job with Hayden Hutchinson, and he got three sacks today. Tyron Smith didn't give up a sack. He got two today. Uh, This is an exciting group of guys on Detroit's football team and Dallas. These two teams are going to be in it till the end. Unfortunately, both these guys aren't going to win the Super Bowl. Only only one of these teams have a chance to go to the Super Bowl, and you still have to go through Dallas. You still have Philadelphia. The NFC is going to be very exciting down the stretch, but I think think Dallas and Detroit both have a chance to represent. Dallas Cowboys are explosive on offense. We can all see that. However, I'm concerned about the one dimension right now. I still don't think they're getting enough out of Tony Pollard in the running game. Um, It's a concern to me. I mean, they had a 92-yard touchdown play that should have been a sack safety. Dak Prescott is a big physical guy that can do special things outside the pocket when things break down. But that was an unblocked player right in his face. I mean, this is a good player. I mean, Derek Barnes is a good linebacker. You got to make that tackle. It's five to nothing. Instead, it's seven to three. So I'm concerned about Dallas's protection issues. I'm concerned about their one dimension. When you're one dimensional on offense, defenses can scheme up some fronts and some coverages and some blitzes that can cause you problems. And and the only way they can fix that and and correct that is if you can run the ball a little bit. And Pollard was, had some good hits, but not, not as many as you would like for the Dallas Cowboys moving forward. I do think they're explosive. Obviously CD lamb, 12 catches, 216 yards. He broke Michael E. Urban's single season record. Uh, of most yards in the season, which is unbelievable. That's a great tribute. Um, But I still think moving forward, they have to be a little bit more balanced. I just don't think they can just rely on deck. Tyron Smith has had a great year, but he got beat twice for sacks by Aiden Hutchinson. Pressure was in Dak Prescott's face all day. Um, He moved around and made some plays. But at the end of the day, Dak is Dak. He's an explosive player. He's a great player. CD is a great player. Pollard's a great player with uh, great potential outside uh, as far as a running back or in, in the pass catcher. Jake Ferguson's a great tight end. So they have a lot to be excited about. Obviously, Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence and uh, the rest of those guys in the backfield and Stephon Gilmore and, and Bland. I mean, this is a good football team. So I'm telling you what, I just think the Cowboys talent-wise have the ability to win every game that they play, but they just have to add a little bit more of a multi-dimensional attack. 
add the running game a little bit more and be more effective running the football. 